we started looking for uh, people who had a deep and profound relationship with the skies and non-human life. When we met the brothers who work with injured black kites, it's when you walk into their house, immediately it's so cinematically surreal and absurd that it's tr- it's really riveting. Of course, we are all deeply moved by be it the ecological or different forms of toxicity. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, that's how it begins. So of course, it's entirely personal. Uh, it's also personally inflected. Last night, I saw um, all that reads. And for 93 minutes, I was in absolute awe. It was this pure joy visually. So I just want to understand, especially the sort of intimacy in your lens. Even when you're talking about something that's so vast, you know, that's so huge, something very distant. That's not, I mean, to, to start maybe with the first shot, when you see the slow pan and the rodents and then the gnat go up. I mean, how are you looking at it? And, and across, actually, through the uh, movie, one can see like there are, you know, very close ups of the mice, of the lizards, the kites, the pigs. So, what's, I mean, how are you looking at that? The first thing before I even met the characters or knew in a more concrete sense what the film would be about, there was this sort of a, a vague, abstract visual texture of what the film would be, like a visual sense of what it would be. And that was, I think, for all of us who, lived in Delhi in recent years, there's this sense of, you know, the broader sensorium of uh, the environment around us itself going hostile, by which I mean the sort of grey, hazy, monotone skies above us and this sense of the world that is laminating uh, our lives, both in the sort of noxious air that we're breathing in, or this sense in its vaguest uh, feeling of uh, the air conditioner of spaceship Earth going all right, right? This, that's a kind of omnipresent kind of a feeling. Uh, we were absolutely certain that we didn't want to make a film on air pollution. I mean, that's it never even came into my head. It wasn't sort of narrowly structured like this. We were very interested in doing something about, in working on something around the relationship between the skies and the non-human world in Delhi, or non-human life in Delhi and its relationship with some, with any two human protagonists. It's in this that we started looking for uh, people who had a deep and profound relationship with the skies and non-human life. In When I say non-human life, the particular subset of it, of which I was interested in was avian life or birds. And in particular, black kites, you know, this thing that all of us, if you're stuck in say a traffic jam or something, you look up and you have this, of course, you have the classic gray, hazy skies, but in that you have these tiny dots that are peppering the sky and these lazy dots gliding in the sky, right? And in that, you keep feeling this thing of like, that's become a sort of classic image of the dystopic picture postcard of Delhi, of these kites in the sky and the visual texture of the sky. So when we met the brothers who work with injured black kites, it's when you walk into their house, immediately it's so cinematically surreal and absurd that it's tr- it's really riveting because you have this tiny derelict basement where on one side you have these heavy metal cutting machines and this broadly decayed industrial sort of landscape and alongside the, that you have these magisterial looking yet vulnerable birds like the black kites the chi being treated so it was this kind of like the salient bipolarity of these two kind of uh, contradictory things in that space that I saw that were very interesting and also the condition of the brothers and how they just soldier on in life itself it was like um, to me it felt remarkable where did it start like when did you sort of realize that this is the story of two brothers and I mean was did it start with the brothers or was it something that led you to the brothers how did you also chance upon the brothers the first oh, read their story maybe that it started with a sense of a visual texture mm. and a kind of vague abstract sort of thing and that's how films often I think emanate in a lot of people's heads is this feeling of what you want to invoke or what you're sensing it's a kind of sensorium right after that at least in my case i am trying to find uh, people who sort of in a felt fleshy embodied way are the best instantiations of that vague uh, sensorium that i'm thinking of i I know this sounds crazy but that's how it begins at first once you meet the characters themselves like the brothers their the singularity of their lives and their and the, comp- and the uh, complications therein and the nuances therein, then of course start fleshing out its own world. Also, how did that sort of seem, was it also some, some somewhere in the back of your head when you were starting out 
the political environment of the country, also uh, of uh, the city specifically, and how it's sort of dynamically changing and it's it's palpable, right? Like winters after winters for the last couple of consecutive years, we've seen the streets of Delhi and, 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 and you know, there have been mm-hmm. protests and, and there have been thousands that have been sitting on the streets. So did, I mean, because your relationship with the city is such, I mean, did you, did it seamlessly sort of make way because it was a city that you were talking about? And then mm. this was simultaneously, it was, I mean, there, there's hostility on several levels. So it was, was it that? Or did you already have a sense that, you know, when you were starting out, that this is somewhere seamlessly incorporate itself? I was absolutely certain that I did not want to make something that was a sort of a um, tunnel, tunnel vision, um, political snapshot of contemporary India. That was not what any of us wanted to do or have done. Um I have a lot of respect for that kind of political filmmaking, but that is not what this project set out to do ever. Um, however, what happens is that when you're telling the story of a family's life and you're interested in painting a kind of well-rounded picture of their lives, inherently what would happen is that like in normal life, you know, it's like things bleed in right from the outside world to the inner sanctum of your home. And I wanted to find a form or a grammar where you respect this idea of uh, layers, but I was very interested uh, in terms of film grammar in this idea of the leak, wherein the outside world leaks in, you know? So in the film also, you have this thing where characters go to the balcony and you hear audio bits of there's some protest going by, etc. So to show that there is this kind of turbulent thing happening outside, we never get into what it is, but you sense that something in the world outside is a buzz, right? Something in the world outside is askew. And Slowly, that's a thing that keeps leaking in at points, perturbing the characters at points, not, but you sort of, the main challenge here was to train my gaze firmly on the characters themselves. And of course, one is tempted to point the camera elsewhere and outside and see the kind of turbulent thing that's going on outside. And like, we're also shoot the last many years have been full of turmoil, right? But it takes some kind of uh, discipline that I think we had to work very hard to sort of inculcate in our team to train our gaze firmly on the characters and let the world outside only bleed in, in this kind of a, you know, like in a way where that's how life often is. So when one sees cities asleep and one, Mm. and then now all that reads and in general, you know, you, your sort of relationship with the city is Mm -hmm. what I want to understand in, so in general, when you're imagining these stories or when you see them sort of unfolding, Mm -hmm. uh, how does your relationship with the city growing up all of these years sort of transcend down to your cinema? So I was born and raised in Delhi and uh, have shot everything that I've shot in Delhi. And I think I feel very locally embedded in the city in the sense of uh, being very interested in the colloquial, in the vernacular in it. And not just specifically about Delhi, but in the idea of the city itself, you know? So um, in a way, if Cities of Sleep was about opening up uh, Delhi through the lens of sleep or the lens of horizontality or the night, like those are some of the main themes where you look at the city through the prism of just sleeping, right? And you think of then how the idea of the political gets reconfigured or uh, relationships of power get reconfigured when you think of it only through the prism of sleep. That's one thing. The other thing, the then moving on, in a way, you can say that this particular film is essentially about looking at the city through the non-human lens or the lens of birds. You know, how does one tell the story of Delhi through a bird? That's an interesting kind of founding premise. And in a way, that's sort of the sort of thing where the team also, I mean, it's the same team actually that worked on Cities of Sleep with some additions which worked on this. And we are a very tight-knit sort of group, all of who are from Delhi, who know Delhi inside out, who can, you know, like for this film, for instance, you needed to know locations inside out. You need to know Yamuna mein kahan pe kaun sa bird dikhta hai. You need to get a sense of ki, if you have to shoot frogs, where to go? If you have to shoot bats, where to go? Where do we go for snails, for turtles, for, you know, like you have to have a real sense of the ecological vein of the city as well. And one is constantly benefiting, of course, from other collaborators that we've worked with. But um, you have to be really le- deeply invested and love the city and I suppose, have a troubled relationship with it that all of us inherently end up having. Does it personally affect you? The, 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 do you feel this hostility on a personal level that the city, and not just the air, the, the politics, the pollution? Uh, of course, we're all deeply moved by 
be it the ecological or different forms of toxicity um and uh, that's how it begins so of course it's entirely personal uh, it's also personally inflected and uh, i think what a lot of us are doing is responding like we're all responding to a broader zeitgeist that um disquiets us and moves us and engages us and in a way a lot of it is about forming a kind of contemporary archive of the times that we lived in and i think that's the sort of driving impulse will it be the same for first for your upcoming project do you have something in mind yeah there's a feeling but i don't like it's it's crazy early to talk about it just yet but uh, uh, yeah i mean uh, i think we'll continue making stuff uh, that that is interested like i said in opening up the city through different uh, uh, registers uh, but nothing that i can say of in a satisfactory way about the future